Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. So let us now look at the second adv traditional advanced control strategy, split range control. So split range control strategy is uh, implemented to improve controllability of the system. So uh, I am just using a very crude notion of controllability. Uh, controllability has a very deeper meaning if you look at the literature of process controls or in general control theory. What I am uh, interest, uh, what I want to represent by uh, this uh, is that uh, you want to improve the range uh, of disturbance across which uh, you want to uh, make the process uh, to remain controllable. So let me explain that uh, with an example. So let us take an example of a gas phase reactor. So let us consider uh, we have a gas phase reactor. So this is the outlet and uh, this is the inlet. And then uh, as it is a gas phase system in order to uh, control the inventory of this uh, reactor we would have to control the pressure. So one of the controlled variables is pressure. Now if we go back to our uh, uh, to the lectures uh, in the last week uh, we can see that there are uh, two primary options uh, in which I can control the pressure. Uh, one is I can control the pressure by using the outlet valve by manipulating the outlet valve uh, such that if the pressure increases I will open the valve more so that more vapor goes out of the system or I can use the feed valve uh, to control this pressure in such a way that if the pressure goes above the set point value I can reduce uh, the amount of feed going into the reactor. Typically uh, when we select uh, the pairings between input and output you want to have minimum effect of this pressure control or the inventory control on the actual operation of this process. So actual operation is uh, reaction between uh, and you typically control the feed, uh, you use the feed wall to control the throughput of the system, how much material is getting processed. So you typically would want to control this pressure by uh, using uh, this outlet valve. <coughs> So that it does not affect the operation of the reaction uh, operator operation or through productivity of the reactor. So you have a pressure controller which will be used to control the outlet pressure. So now let us consider, uh, so this under normal circumstances this is how this pressure controller will work. If the temperature, if the pressure slightly goes above the value this outlet valve will open, if the pressure starts to drop uh, you would want to close this outlet wall so that the material inventory uh, the vapor inventory inside this reactor is maintained. Now let us consider uh, an abnormal situation that uh, the reaction uh, inside this reactor are going into a runaway so that a lot of vapor is getting generated and because of this the pressure keeps on increasing. So now as the pressure increases you will in open the outlet wall but there is a limit up to which this outlet wall can be opened. So uh, the maximum it can go is when this wall is completely open. So in that case uh, it will have a certain uh, open resistance and then all the uh, that resistance will be dictated by how much vapor this gas uh, or this line can carry. So even though so when the wall is completely open it is as good as that there is no wall and the entire pipeline is uh, taking this vapor out. 
but as we are considering a runaway situation where lot of vapor is getting generated into this system it may not be sufficient to maintain the pressure inside this uh, reactor or the pressure will keep on building because uh, the limiting uh, thing is now there is no way you can manipulate the pressure anymore so you have lost the controllability because the manipulated input is saturated so when so the concept i am telling you is when manipulated input is saturated you lose controllability that means you can your controller is no longer can do anything to prevent uh, this pressure build up now the other way you can uh, improve this response is in such a situation uh, in order to reduce uh, this additional vapor generation because of this runaway reaction you can actually cut down the feed so along with this if i do manipulate the inlet wall as well so as the pressure has gone beyond uh, my control limit and the outlet wall is saturated in such a case maybe in order to ensure safety of this system i can start cutting down the feed flow so that as the amount of reactant which is going into the reactor is going down obviously the rate of reaction will go down and the amount of vapor generation will go down and eventually it will close down the feed so that the reactor does not have any input all the material which is already there will find a exhaust pa exit path through this outlet and eventually you would be able to maintain uh, or you would be able to um, restrict the pressure build up to a satisfactory limit so here what we are doing is in order to control a single control variable which is pressure we are going to use two manipulated inputs so you have <coughs> one output and two inputs but they are not simultaneously working so what we are doing is initially as most of the part you would want this pressure to be controlled by using the outlet wall you don't want uh, this pressure to be controlled by changing how much uh, raw material is processed so most of the time the, this controller will be using manipulated input as uh, the outlet wall only when it gets saturated you would want the other uh, manipulated input to come in so that you can still maintain or increase the range over which the pressure can be controlled so by using such a strategy you are going to improve the performance of this system to any unanticipated uh, large disturbances so here uh, the way uh, this control thing is will work is uh, you would actually split the control action between manipulated inputs so how do we how do how do we do, uh, split this automatically uh, you can recall the, that uh, when you your controller gives you a signal to the manipulated input it gives uh, the signal as a current signal now uh, earlier it used to be a pneumatic signal nowadays uh, the standard is to use a current signal which is between 4 to 20 milliamperes wherein uh, 4 milliamps says uh, it the wall should be at its zero state and 20 says uh, the wall should be at the other extreme state so if it is a fail uh, closed type of wall at 4 milliampere it will be completely closed and at 20 milliampere it will be completely open so here uh, we are actually going to use the same range to drive two manipulated inputs so in order to do that uh, we will have to split this range so we can split this range as 4 to 12 milliamps and 12 to 20 milliamps so one wall will operate predominantly during this range and other wall will operate during this range that is why it is known as a split range design so how is it going to work so if i just show you how the walls operate for this case so this is a controller output range so i can show it between 4 milliamps this is 12 milliamps and this is 20 milliamps and here i show percentage opening for the two walls where this is 100% so now what i want is initially uh, 
we would want uh, that during 4 to 12 milliamps the pressure should be controlled by using the outlet valve. So, the outlet valve uh, when the pressure is 0, uh, the outlet valve should be completely closed uh, when the control signal is at minimum and when it reaches uh, halfway range you would want the outlet valve to be completely open. So, this is my outlet valve and then after that it should always uh, remain open during when the other controller is active. So, this is my outlet valve and now if I want to draw how the feed valve should look like. Uh, when the outlet valve is controlling the pressure, I want my feed valve to be completely open and only when it is saturated at that time you would start cutting down the feed flow. So, this is my feed valve. So, you can see that the feed valve is operational only between 12 to 20 milliamps and during the 4 to 12 milliamps the outlet uh, valve is active. So, we are actually splitting the control range into these two controllers and here we are considering that there is no overlap. But it is not necessary we can always uh, we can also do a design uh, where there is a fair uh, some amount of overlap uh, between these two actions. So, this uh, outlet valve may go between 4 to 14 milliamps and then the feed valve might cut down from 10 to 20 milliamps. So, all sorts of uh, options are possible. Uh, so, here it was just an example where I uh, did not consider any overlap. Let us consider another example. <coughs> To illustrate this. So, let us consider uh, a top of a distillation column and you, we want to control the pressure. So, in that case uh, this uh, is a gaseous product. So, this is going here and the pressure can be controlled by manipulating this uh, product flow. Now, this product uh, actually goes to another customer uh, many times uh, or at least the example where I am considering it goes to another customer and then uh, the customer may have his own uh, valve uh, on the same line. So, the customer may have another wall on the same line and if he closes this wall then irrespective of whether we open this wall completely or not, this pressure may not be, uh, you will not be able to maintain this pressure because uh, when you have two walls, one is open and the other one is pinched, effectively the net resistance will happen on this customer wall and then the pressure you will not be able to control. So, in such a case uh, what you can do is uh, or what is typically done is that you also have an additional line which is known as a vent line. And so, if such a situation happens that the customer is actually pinching the wall and it is not uh, giving you a good control, then you can have a split range control design where part of the, if the pressure is not getting regulated because of the uh, product wall, you will use the vent wall. Now, uh, you under normal circumstances, uh, you would not want to use a vent wall to control the pressure because this is loss of product. When you are venting the product, you are not getting any value out of that. So, this action should only happen when this controller is saturated. So, if I want to do this, uh, I want to show you uh, how the split range will happen here. So, controller output range again we are at 4 to 20 milliamps. What you would want is a, and this is 100 percent opening. What you would want is a typically uh, under normal circumstances you would want the product wall to remain uh, to use uh, to be used uh, to control the pressure and then the out, uh, vent wall should be closed. And uh, in such a case let us consider, let me also show you the design where you can have uh, overlap uh, between the two actions. So, let us say that between 4 to 14 the product wall is going to be used as a controlled variable and after 14 it will remain constant. So, this is product wall.
and then if I want to show the vent wall, uh, up to 10, 4 to 10 milliamps, uh, the, you don't want the vent wall to be open. Only when uh, this product wall is uh, close to saturation, uh, you would start opening the vent wall and it will go up to 20 milliamps. <coughs> so this will be vent wall. So you can see that uh, here the action split range is slightly different than uh, the previous case. Uh, so that uh, here you have two parallel lines rather than uh, one increase and other decreasing and you also have a degree of overlap. So this between 10 to 14 you have overlap of actions. <coughs> so you can see that up to 4 to 10 only the product wall is in action between 14 to 20 only the vent wall is in action and between 10 to 14 uh, both uh, the walls are in action and uh, the reason why you want to have an overlap is towards the end of this control range or towards the end of uh, this uh, <coughs> range where the control this wall is almost closing and this wall is opening typically there is like a very less amount of uh, very less change in the flow typically the wall will not uh, start uh, allowing any flow till the wall opening is 5, 10 percent 15 percent so in order to allow for that much uh, uh, change to happen you typically go with an overlap so even if uh, here up to 12 uh, you are saying that the vent wall is opening the actually the vent flow would not have increased uh, much and here this would have mostly plateaued uh, the pr product flow would have plateaued out so essentially it works like the uh, only when this uh, product wall is uh, completely saturated then only the vent wall will open and in order to account for this uh, opening and closing uh, the end, these ends where the flow does not change much, you would want to have an overlap. Similarly, uh, there are certain cases uh, where you can also have a dead band uh, where uh, you do not, up to a certain range, you do not want any control action to be taken and that is done when uh, these two actions are uh, mutually exclusive. So you do not want any mixing between the two actions. Uh, the very commonly used example here is a batch reactor uh, where you use the same jacket for uh, heating as well as cooling. So up to a certain range you would use uh, the hot fluid or steam uh, as the manipulated variable uh, to increase the temperature and then uh, towards the later half, uh, towards the later range uh, you would use a cooling water and again you do not want uh, to mix uh, the steam with, uh, you do not want to mix steam with cooling water. So in such a case uh, in order as a protection you generally have a dead band where no control, uh, no control wall is operational. <coughs> So you can also have a dead bind inside this split range. So that is about the split range control. Uh, let me consider now the next type of advanced control strategy uh, which is a selective control. And it is sort of an other extreme co compared to split range control. So in split range control we had uh, multiple manipulated variable uh, used uh, to control a single controlled variable. In selective control you have more controlled variables than manipulated inputs. So in such a case uh, you cannot uh, pair all the controlled variables with the manipulated inputs and this is very common in industry in chemical processes that you have lot of controlled objectives but you do not have that many handles into the process to control all of them. So what we essentially do is uh, we try to keep uh, one, so you would want to control only the key output. So, so you select which output is controlled, is in control and this uh, selection is based on criticality. So what you have is uh, under, so whichever control uh, variable which is uh, critical uh, you would use uh, that uh, for uh, to manipulate the manipulated variable and only when the other control variable becomes critical you would shift uh, the controller from one variable to the other. So let me explain you <coughs> this through an example. So let us consider <coughs> a 
that uh, you have a tank uh, where you want to control the level and there is a pump at the outlet so you can change the flow <coughs> and uh, accordingly you can control the level <coughs> so typically what you want is uh, you have a level controller and then that level controller will change uh, the speed of this pump and if the level goes beyond uh, its set point value you would reduce uh, the pump speed uh, you would increase the pump speed uh, so that uh, more liquid is pumped out and vice versa so under normal circumstances you would want to control the level inside this tank however in such certain case might happen that if the level is uh, very low then in that uh, if the level uh, starts to fall it would try to reduce uh, the pump speed and then the outlet flow would go to such a low value that the pump cannot uh, <coughs> pump uh, that much uh, low flow or what we would end up with uh, is a physical limitation in terms of minimum flow we also call it as cavitation if flow is low so in order to avoid such a case uh, you would also want to control the flow above a certain minimum value so uh, what uh, we would want to do is under normal circumstances the speed of the pump should be manipulated by the level and only when uh, this flow uh, goes to a very low value which is uh, dictated by the safety limits you would want uh, this flow controller to actually uh, take a uh, control of this pump speed so the way you can incorporate that <coughs> is by using what is known as a override control so you want flow to override level control when critical flow is about to happen so what you would do uh, in such a case uh, is that uh, <coughs> let me redraw the same figure So you have a level controller which is going to give me some signal and we also have a flow controller which is going to give me a signal. So this is a set point level and the set point for the flow is flow whatever is the low flow uh, which is supposed to happen uh, which is uh, from a safety point of view which is acceptable and then uh, accordingly it will also give you an action. and you will select whichever is the highest action among the two and then that will be translated to the pump so under normal circumstances uh, as uh, the outlet flow is above uh, the minimum flow value what this flow controller is going to tell me is that uh, my current value of flow is higher than its set point so it will try to reduce uh, the speed of the pump so under normal circumstances <coughs> my f is greater than f low so fic will try to reduce pump speed so the output of this will be lower than the output given by the level controller as we are using a high selector switch this action will carry forward so lic will override the FIC so under normal circumstances the level uh, will be in control and it will manipulate the speed of the pump under low flow condition what is going to happen is uh, when the flow goes below F low in that case uh, the output of uh, the flow controller will try to increase uh, the speed of the pump and because of that <coughs> it will take it will have the higher value it will take control so fic will 
override LIC so that it will prevent any cavitation of the pump. So, by using uh, this high selector switch we are able to control both level as well as flow at their uh, or above their respective values. So, in this case uh, you can see that level is a primary control variable and the flow has a set point which is driven by the safety conditions. <coughs> Let us consider a more uh, interesting example here. Uh, so, here is a, a distillation column and at the bottom of the distillation column you typically control this level at the bottom of the column which is also known as the sump level and uh, here we are considering a control situation uh, where you want to control the bottom's purity uh, by using uh, the steam flow. So, steam is used uh, to control the bottom's composition uh, and then uh, the level is controlled by using this product flow. Now, it may happen that uh, this product typically this product flow uh, is uh, much smaller compared to what you are vaporizing. Uh, so, lot of liquid goes in through this channel rather than here and if the level uh, uh, is it is not able to control the level because uh, this flow is very small compared to this. So, if this level keeps on increasing uh, the maximum this wall can go is it will com be completely open and still sometimes this level may not you may not be able to control the level. So, in such a case what you have is uh, you also have a secondary uh, level controller uh, which will have a set point uh, corresponding to the maximum level you which you can have in this sum and if uh, that level uh, set point uh, gets crossed it will try to increase the steam flow. So, what it is uh, going to do is uh, in the cases uh, where <coughs> Uh, you have this uh, this outlet product wall is not able to control the level <coughs> from uh, let me consider ok repeat. So, in this example uh, let us consider a case uh, that uh, this level uh, keeps on falling and that is happening uh, because uh, you are vaporizing uh, more uh, amount of uh, liquid and in such a case uh, as you are having a level controller here uh, which is uh, using this outlet wall the maximum it can do is it will close this wall. Now, if you close this wall uh, all the liquid is going to go here, but still if you are vaporizing more stuff uh, than what is uh, getting brought down from that uh, level above it is not going to maintain the level. So, in such a case what you have is you have a secondary level controller which will have a set point which is given by this critical level value and then uh, only when the level falls below that value uh, this controller uh, will give you a lower value of steam flow and then because of this low selector switch in even though the composition controller is asking for more steam uh, to be put in into the reboiler this level controller will take action and it will reduce the steam flow as you reduce the steam flow the amount of uh, vapor which gets generated will reduce and accordingly uh, you will have uh, the level uh, will start building up into this tank. Now, note that uh, the level controller uh, set point here will be a typical operating point and this level controller will have a set point uh, which is given by the critical limit. So, this controller will take action or it will override the composition control here I am showing it as a temperature uh, because uh, typically you would control the composition by using some uh, referred temperature. So, under normal circumstances the steam flow will be manipulated uh, by uh, in response to any fluctuations in this temperature and only when the level uh, keeps on falling uh, below the critical level uh, you would uh, want uh, this level controller to override uh, this particular composition or temperature controller. So, you can see that uh, this selective control or override control uh, allows you to trade off uh, between two controlled objectives uh, depending on the severity and that is why it is known as a selective control. So, we will take a break here and when we come back we will look at the other control strategies. Thank you.